PHNX Wildcats show. Shout out to OG's Brands, the official sponsor of Flavoring Fridays. Head on over to OG'sBrands.com to see their full lineup, including God, their, it, mother... including their my... new gummy <laughs> OGs, naturals of my... the OGs, and find out where you can find them. Hello, Saul Bookman. How are you doing? So, sorry. My dog scared the crap out of me. He right. wanted to play with the toy, and I didn't realize he was right down here. So, Well, we'll tell him to buzz off. You got I stuff did. to do. I did. Yeah, so we got a lot to get to the show. We're going to obviously talk Arizona basketball, a lot of Arizona basketball. We're going to rehash what happened. We're going to talk about going forward, all kinds of stuff. But Saul Bookman has watched the Arizona basketball game again. This is true, Saul Bookman. You just told me this. You know, I, I watched it because my initial impressions, you know, because I know a lot of people always want to go after Tommy, and that's fine. And listen, I'm not a Tommy apologist. It's probably going to sound like one right now, but – um, I just, I, I, I really value telling it like I see it. And what I saw last night was a team that was, that fought hard and they had a couple mental lapses in addition to Clemson having some fortunate bounces. And I go through a couple things. First of all, right off the bat, Wiggins. Okay. Wiggins is a 34% three point shooter. He, he was pulling up. Like he routinely hits threes all the time, right? right? He hit one, he hit his second one right in front of me. And I'm like, and it was like not even five seconds into the shot clock. He hits it like this is just what he does. And I'm right. just like, this that's that was a bad shot. If it, if he misses, that's a bad shot. Um, then you go over in a key possession, uh, Caleb Love comes down, scores. Okay. Um, he scores, we take our first lead, 46, 45, and you're like, okay. Okay, let's see. Let's see how this is gonna go. They come down. They run a set. It wasn't even a set play. It was just in the flow of motion. Clark comes off a screen, catches it. Doesn't even hesitate. Shoots. If your scouting report tells you that Clark is a twenty six percent three point shooter, you're not gonna play up on him. But he cashed it like he was Steph Damn Curry. Right. And so those are that. That's just that's just two so far. Right. And then we get into. The, the mental breakdowns uh, of the team, right? Um, Pella had did not have a good stretch of, uh, of defense uh, here and there. One, the first inbounds backdoor that he just gave up. He he wasn't even – Which time? The the first one in the first half. No, this, the yeah. second one was not his. It was Keyshawn. I, I, I will say that because Keyshawn was guarding P.J. Hall to, an, to a start. And this is at the end of the game under under a minute left. Um, and, uh, 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 Keyshot is going and covering PJ. PJ comes over to set the screen for Gerard, who, uh, Pella is guarding, but he slips the screen. And anytime you slip the screen, that's on your, your original defender to block that off. It's not right. on Pella because right. Pella never got screened. He's supposed right. to stay on his band. And so that was a, that was a mental breakdown by Keyshot in that moment. Uh, you know, and Bala was defending the out of bounds, uh, you know, the, the passer. So he didn't have time to turn around and react because it was so fast. And that was basically the ball game. But, but then, the, the, it, well, I say that, but it really wasn't. They're down by two after Jaden Bradley hits the three. Chase Hunter comes off. This is another Pella runs out when Chase Hunter catches the ball on the wing. Just terrible defensive uh, stance like positioning. He runs so hard to the to the left side of Hunter and he doesn't shuffle step to kind of slow his momentum down so he can react quickly. He kind of just is running and by the time Hunter gets in and sees his momentum coming him, he just makes one little left turn. Unfortunately, Jaden Bradley's in the middle of the key trying to fend off PJ Hall, 
So Jaden Bradley's like, I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't right now because it's either Chase Hunter's going to get a layup or P.J. Hall's probably going to get a nice little easy bucket. So he tries to foul Hunter, and Hunter was f- spectacular last night. He finishes the bucket, um, and that basically cemented the game. There was just so many things last night. The Shefflin three, right on the heels of that Clark three, that was a 6-0 run basically by, by Clemson uh, after Arizona had finally taken the lead again. It's just – the bank three, come on, man. Like it, these are the things that tend to happen uh, against Arizona for whatever reason. It's not just a Tommy thing. It's also a Sean Miller thing. It was also a loot thing. Like it's just, it's an Arizona thing, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. Just- big, the big, the big turning point to me in this game was when Arizona was up one and Pella drove to the basket and Pella had a wide open layup, which he banked or which he missed. And then Clemson went right back down the court. Arizona could have pushed it to three. Clemson went right back down and they never gave up the lead after that. That to me was just, and again, it's a, it, it was a four possession or a four point swing, but that to me was just a massive, massive swing because you get up three, all of a sudden you start really feeling good about yourself. You start really being able to kind of maybe push the, the pressure a little bit. And Clemson went right back down and scored, and they never really looked back. I really thought Pella should have dunked that. Yeah. At least from my vantage point, it was right in front of me. I thought I thought he was easily high enough to dunk that, and he tried to finesse it, and he just missed. And, I, and Pella didn't have his greatest game yesterday, I'll tell you that much. Uh, defensively, he, he, was, he guarded Hunter a couple times, and one time – Hunter drives baseline, knowing that Hunter is he, he was he was ha- he was in a groove all night. Like right. it, everything seemed easy to him. He drives baseline. Pella tries to 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 flop, and he gives him a wide open jumper. And it's just like you got to know the situation. You're not going to get that call right then and there. Um, so it was just. It was a what tough. Was, it was a tough game overall. What was disappointing to me too is that Arizona was able to get Clemson into the bonus with about eleven minutes left in the game, and then Arizona. Granted, I know Clemson wins zone at that time. You got to be able to take advantage of that. Arizona was not able to take advantage of that. Arizona was just taking threes. They were playing right into Clemson's hands. Clemson had a. Uh, I was watching a Clemson podcast today where essentially the coach was saying, "Yeah, we were hoping they were going to shoot threes because we didn't have any way to stop them when they would attack the basket." And Arizona played right into their hands. They did. They did. A uh, 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 hundred thousand uh, percent. I, I would say that maybe, you know, I think maybe Arizona was thinking because they went zone, let's let's see if we can we can hit an outside shot and maybe break the seal. But also um, you're, you're looking at Balo who missed six straight free throws. Right. So you, you're hesitant to give him the ball because he just has not been coming through in those moments. So it's just it was a mixture of everything. Uh, you know, they got a little tight. They had an opportunity to win. Jaden Bradley was really the only one, in my opinion, that just felt like he was just he was just playing basketball, having a he good. He's the time one that wanted there. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I I wouldn't say that. I think everybody wanted it. They all played as hard as they could. It's just they fell apart and had mental lapses at the wrong time, and that's not really on Tommy. A backdoor screen when you've you've practiced that thing a million times, right? You just don't you don't do that. You don't give up layups underneath the basket on out of bounds plays it just cannot happen and Pella f- fell asleep one thing and I love Caleb Love I thought and you know obviously I've been a big Caleb Love fan this year but one thing that I think I think he left a lot of points on the board in this game and throughout the season I would have loved to have seen him drive the ball more those shots I mean he was 0 for 9 you and I watched RJ Davis after that sometimes those games happen you just you just see it but man when those those shots weren't those shots weren't close those shots were not going in sometimes it's just not your day i loved when he was aggressive early on to start the second half when they got into that run and then he just started uh, he just started shooting threes again and i again i felt that arizona kind of went away with some of their advantages and that caleb love i think was right at the forefront of that again love what he did he was an all american this year but i also think that he should have been able to get to the basket more and he, they didn't do it yeah, I think it was a vic- he was a victim of his own circumstance in the first half because he had a couple times around the basket where he tried to make something happen and it didn't it didn't work out, and I think maybe that that played a part of of him not being as aggressive uh, against the zone as he should have been. And, and nice. again, when you're talking about next year, the reason why I, I believe I'm firmly on the Jaden Bradley should start train is because Jaden Bradley, for the most part, will always attempt to to penetrate. Right. Even if it's just a couple steps to kick out, he he's he's gonna try and get some movement out of that zone as opposed to 
uh, when you look at Kylan and you look at Caleb, where everything's basically perimeter based against the zone because they're trying to shoot threes for whatever reason, and it wasn't working out last night. And that was a modification. If there was one thing that I could I could say, you know, point to Tommy is you've seen this before with these guys and their lack of commitment to drive to the basket and, and try to get buckets in against the zone. And right. that's something that should have been cleaned up. And I, I listen. I have no doubt that he will clean it up before next season. And I know there's questions about next season. We'll get to that in a second. But that was that, those are my takeaways. Also, I do want to talk about Tommy. Um, but go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Well, well, we're definitely going to get to Tommy and about how lucky we are to have a Tommy Lloyd because I think we need to put things in context. One uh, little thing, and again, he's been beat up a lot, so I'll be brief on this. But one thing that I think that does need to happen to a certain degree next year, though, is that I don't believe that players should just be guaranteed minutes, no matter how hard that, no matter how they're playing. And I'll just use Kylan as an example here. I mean, Kylan has had a lot of really, really, really bad games this year. Kylan Boswell played three more minutes than Jaden Bradley did this game. Kylan Boswell was, we can just call it what it is. Sometimes guys go through stuff. He wasn't good. And I think that there's a little bit of this, a little bit of, at least on my end, a little bit of a concern that no matter what happens, you'll always be able to play. I mean, let's be honest here. Uh, Kids caught it again. Kids caught trying to gamble at a, a table. Obviously, everybody saw the picture. Kids do dumb things. Totally get it. The fact that he wasn't benched for a few minutes, that everything was allowed, that he played 28 minutes the very next game, it just kind of shows me that he basically thought, well, there is really no accountability for things. I think they need to work on that a little bit because I think there needs to be some tough love because, again, tough love is still love at the end of the day. I have no problem with that. Yeah. I Again, Tommy's in his third year coaching, uh, having a, f- a full handle on this entire team and roster and program. And I think it's it's going to take some time to to get all the little nooks and crannies. Where they say something like it takes ten thousand hours for you to to perfect your craft or at least be an expert at your craft. Right. Yeah. Um, sure. To me, I feel like he's at about three thousand hours. Like yeah. that's just what it is. You yeah. know, it's it, game situation. It, it takes time to to understand and and make adjustments on the fly in the moment and really think about how you guys are are, 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 perce- are pursuing a victory. When you're talking about Kylan Boswell, you got to understand, Tommy recruited Kylan. He's mm-hmm. one of his first high-ranked recruits that he brought into the program. There's going to be an emotional connection to that in itself. But I guarantee you, when Tommy reflects on the season, the ups and the downs that have happened – and how they all manifested themselves in kind of in, in inopportune moments. I, I'm fairly confident that that Tommy's going right, to make the right decision uh, because it's it's what's best for the program. Yeah, and so that we'll we'll find out there. Like I said, he's it, you know Tommy Lloyd, and we're going to get to that in just a second. But first, Saul, I want to talk to you about the Arizona Lottery, my friend. The Arizona Lottery. We are big fans of the Arizona Lottery on the PHNX Wildcats show, as we are across the board. Saul, you have not won the Arizona Lottery. I don't know if you're being modest or not. You could be. Tell us if you are, though. Uh, I would, and I have not. All right, the Arizona Lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's about giving back to the state and the communities. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and travel prizes. Check it out, the AZ Lottery. And as I was getting my uh, my uh, luggage off of the conveyor belt today, guess what I saw? A sign on the conveyor belt for the Gila River Resorts and Casinos. All kinds of good stuff going on there. Multiple locations there, as you do, as many of you do know. Again, check it out. You do you at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Visit play at Gila.com for more details. Saul, I think you have something going on at the Gila River Resorts and Casinos. This is true. Yeah, next weekend we got the the collective by Mike Bibby. Shoe, uh, a little shoe pop-up. Come check it out. You can come on the 5th and 7th if you want to and, and come to our son's watch parties. Uh, or you can come anytime that weekend, uh, sat, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, and Bibby will be there with his with his shoe collection. He's got uh, one hell of a shoe collection. It'll be Hilo River Resorts and Casinos out at Wild Horse Pass, so come check it out. All right, now let's get to Tommy Lloyd. Now, first, like I said, one of my big critiques this season is that I do think there were too many games where just at the point – listen, you're not going to win games at the, with – Three straight years where you've had some pretty difficult play at the point guard spot. That's just difficult to it's just difficult to win in games like that. My biggest concern, I think, is that there was never really a point when you started really kind of pushing towards Jaden Bradley as the starter. Twenty four minutes to twenty one with how they were both playing yesterday. 
was not a big enough differential for me. But we're also going to get into the positives of Tommy Lloyd. Tommy Lloyd is the right man for this job. Tommy Lloyd is probably going to learn some things, but at the same time, I am more than happy that Tommy Lloyd is the coach of Arizona going forward, Saul Bookman. Uh, a million percent. So I, I want to go through some things because it's always good to kind of put perspective in the moment. And I think a lot of people were upset last night and, you know, and, and I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to call people names like casuals or anything like that, but I just feel like if you don't have the right frame of mind and the right perspective um, on how things really are and how, how successful coaches are in whatever year they're in, then you're not, you're you're going to be too quick to react, and and we are in a very reactionary society right now. Everything is quick and instant. Like you want a national championship in year one, or else Tommy's a failure, right? Like those things don't happen. They have never happened for any of the most successful coaches in the history of basketball. No one has won a national championship in year one that was considered a Hall of Fame type of coach. Right. You might have fluked around and got one. But you didn't. You weren't like a, a hallmark name, right? So let's go through the list. John Calipari, eight seasons to get to his first Final Four, won a title in his twentieth year. So it took him eight seasons with UMass. He finally got there, and then it took a little while for Kentucky to finally break through with him. Okay, Patino. It, it took him seven seasons to get to his first Final Four. He didn't get his first title until his fourteenth season, and he got two out of seven championships versus Final Fours. Uh, Bill Self, this one kind of surprised me. 15 seasons before his first Final Four. 15 seasons before his first Final Fours. And then you might be sitting, oh, whoa, well, how much of that was at Tulsa? Okay, well, let's play that game. It took him five seasons to get to his first Final Four at KU. Okay? And everybody reveres Bill Self because of his, his track record. Bill Self, phenomenal coach. Uh, he, he's gotten two championships. Uh, and he's been at KU for 21 years, and he's been to four Final Fours. That's basically what Lute did, except for one more national championship, okay? Uh, Danny Hurley, everybody's talking about UConn. How phenomenal are they? They're the best thing since sliced bread. Okay, cool. 12 seasons before his first Final Four, and, and he has one title, and it was their first bid to get to the Final Four under Danny Hurley. So, um and then Kelvin Sampson, I heard so much yesterday. Oh, we should go out and get Kelvin Sampson. <laughs> you don't want Kelvin Sampson, number one. Uh, 19 seasons before his first Final Four, only two Final Fours, and they were each spaced out by 12 years apart, uh, and he has no titles. Also, he got fired from Indiana and banned by the NCAA for five seasons before finally getting a job back on the sidelines and then ultimately getting the job at Houston. Has he done a phenomenal job at Houston? Yes, a million, a million percent. But he's good for Houston. Right. He's not good for Arizona. Dean Smith, six seasons before a Final Four appearance. First title was in his 21st season after seven seasons at North Carolina. And then thank you, Michael Jordan, for that first title. And then Coach K, 11 seasons, six at Duke before making, making it to the Final Four. And then obviously he's probably the most successful of the bunch 12 Final Fours, five natties outside of one other person. Bobby Knight, six seasons before a Final Four. Five appearances and two titles. 14 seasons after his last Final Four appearance, he never made anything more than one Elite Eight and two Sweet Sixteens in 14 years towards the end of his career. Uh, John Wooden, 16 seasons before his first Final Four. We're talking about a guy who is revered as maybe the best basketball coach in the history of the game. 16 seasons before his first Final Four, 18 before he got his first title, and then, of course, after that, 13 years, 10 titles, including an eight-in-a-row streak. Uh, and then Lute Olsen, of course, seven seasons before his first Final Four at Iowa, five seasons before his first Final Four at Arizona. He had five uh, Final Fours in total between the two schools and one national championship. I say all that to say Tommy Lloyd is in his very first head coaching job. Period. These guys had stops along the way. Tommy Lloyd is at a premier university, so he, he he's he's kind of lucky in that regard. He's in year three, and yeah, there's going to be a few little miscalculations here and there. But I've been happy with the way Tommy Lloyd has run his program, the way he carries himself, 
and the way he represents this university and tries to uh, build his kids up. And we might fault him for not benching a guy like Colin Boswell. I get it. I totally get it. But there's also something to be said about believing in your players to the to the point where you hope that they can break through because they're going to they're going to believe in you because you believe in them. Right. So it, it's a it's a tricky game you got to play. Tommy's going to figure it out. I'm not panicking about him and I sure as hell would never say we got to get rid of him because I promise you there's a school here in this damn city that would love to get their hands on a Tommy Lloyd and turn their program around. Instead, they got Bobby Hurley. Yeah, and I think the thing is, too, is that how many coaches out there would you rather have for the next 10 years? Again, that I asked that. I mean, there's probably a couple. Cool. But at the same time, how many out there would you really rather have for the next 10 years? Maybe, like I said, maybe two or three. I don't know. But I think that's a uh, I think that's a question that uh, you need to be able to, If you want somebody fired, I always want to know is who's the alternative? Who do you want to go with? Who is that? Who is that person? And, you know, honestly, and I'm going to keep going back to this. Listen, Tommy Lloyd's a good dude. Uh, at the end of the day, I like being able to root for Arizona. I like being able to root for him because of Tommy Lloyd. That's a big – can you imagine rooting for UCLA with Mick Cronin? Can oh you God, imagine no. being able to root for somebody like that? That's just kind of an embarrassment. I think that uh, – I think that's a big part of what goes into this. And another thing is too, yeah. yes, there are certain things that he's definitely, I think he's got to figure out. My big thing is just staying with players no matter what. You could say that that, I mean, I think back last year to Kirk Creesa in the tournament when he was one of 11 and he was just never coming out of the game. And I think kind of this year with Kylan Boswell, those are things he's got to figure out. But again, he's not a stupid dude. He's going to figure things out. Sometimes it just takes you a little bit of time. And again, like Saul said, this is his third year. This is his third year. Also, and I'm going to get into this for a second. Cronin is, I'm going to totally challenge this, has been to a Final Four. Nice guys finished last. He went to a Final Four with all of somebody else's players. He's got all of his own players now, and they finished seventh in the crappy Pac-12, and they have nothing coming in next year. Tommy Lloyd has had a number two seed this year with all of his own players. They're going to be preseason rated a lot higher than UCLA. UCLA has fallen apart now that Mick Cronin's got his own guys. So to me, that really isn't a fair comparison. What I mean, say you, you, I, I, I mean your, your favorite uh, sheet uh, uh, or whatever that said, I, I didn't read it. But I mean, are you sitting here telling me that you'd rather have Mick Cronin? Right. Is that, is that what that is that what that was about? Like, and I don't say that in you know to attack you or anything like that. I'm just I'm genuinely interested to know are do you really feel like you'd rather have Mick Cronin because if Tommy Lloyd finished seventh in the Pac-12 this year we hell, would be he finished in the real conversation he finished in the head. he finished in the sweet 16 and everybody and some people are calling for his head could you imagine if we finished seventh right exactly and at a school like UCLA so to me there's that now again like I said I think it is more than fair to critique but at the same time there's a big difference now critique look, is fine Right. Critique is fine. It's a million percent fine. But you Mike, lose but you me can't... if you want, want to get rid of him. Yeah. That's where you lose I mean, me. What's your solution? Right. Don't, don't bring me a problem. Bring me a solution. There's not a solution out there. Now, it is going to be fascinating to see, because I, I generally am a subscriber to NBA. Listen, the, this team, I, I believe, should have beaten Clemson. They didn't beat Clemson. Happens. Whatever. But generally, the really good teams, they do have NBA talent. They have clear-cut NBA talent. And you look at uh, Arizona's teams that went to the Final Four. You look at all of these teams that generally went to the Elite Eight. Final Four. You had Sean Elliott. Obviously, you had multiple dudes. 94, you had Khalid. You had Damon. Uh, 97, you had uh, Mike Mike D, Jason Terry, Mike Bibby. 01, Richard Jefferson, Gilbert Arenas, etc. There's no clear-cut NBA dude on this team. And I'm not saying that as a uh, slight to any of the players on this team. I'm just saying it's generally a fact. Arizona's got a top five recruiting class coming in. It's the first top five recruiting class that Tommy Lloyd has brought in. Highlighted, you got Carter Bryant, top 20 kid coming in. Jamari Phillips, top 30 kid coming in. Uh, Joson Sainon, a top 10 player coming in. Emmanuel Steven, top 100. This is going to be his first true top five class coming in. And again, at the end of the day, it's not an end-all be-all, but NBA talent matters. This year's team, last year's team, had no clear-cut NBA player. Now, you could say whatever you want about it, but that's just a fact. It's just the way it is, Saul. You haven't had that for two seasons. Right. Uh, Benedict Matherin was the last one. That was legit. Yep. Um, and obviously, you had Terry and, and um, Coloco. So, uh, this season, there is nobody. If any of these guys, if, all, if every single player on this roster declared for the NBA draft, you might be able to get K.J. Lewis in there, and maybe you might – 
maybe an NBA team might take a flyer on a uh, Kylan Boswell, but I, I just, I don't see it. KJ be the year, only one picked. Yeah. And next year you're, you're going to have some clear cut talent that is going to be at that level. Now, can they develop over the course of the season and time to, to really give you the benefit in March? I don't know. I don't know, but I do trust Tommy in getting people through the transfer portal because it has absolutely worked for him. And he has, he has uh, a phenomenal track record in developing transfers to be able to play at a higher level, to give themselves the best shot to get to the NBA. So like you look at Keisha Johnson prior to this season, I, there was going to be tons of questions about his offensive abilities. Can he, can he shoot? Can he score? He's athletic. Sure. He could play defense. Sure. But what else can he do? He displayed a little bit more of that um, this season because he was able to. So I think I, I, Tommy's got a great blueprint for transfers out there. And I guarantee you, there's going to be one transfer that comes here that everybody's going to be surprised about. That's going to be a legit dude, and everybody's going to be on the hype trade again. Yeah. All right. Now this is a fair. This is a fair point. Now most of these I think are a little bit of troll, but this is a fair point. Arizona's just got to get better point guard play. It's period. And you know what? I, I, and I think Tommy Lloyd's going to be able to do just that. I like Jaden Bradley. I think Jaden Bradley should uh, is going to be a very very good starter. I think Jaden Bradley, quite frankly, is going to be perfect going into the Big Twelve because of the, his toughness, his tenacity, his way to score, and. Arizona, like I said, it's difficult to it's difficult to win. I'm not assigning blame, but when you had Kirk Carissa for two years, when you had Kylan this year starting, that's just difficult in the NCAA tournament when it comes down to the big. I mean, Saul and I grew up watching point guard you, and you know, and it's listen in the last what since in the last what, McConnell, yeah, McConnell and Mark Lyons were probably the only real above average point guards you've had here in the about the last what 12 13 years something to yeah. that effect that's something that arizona's got to rectify and i think that i have no doubt that will i think it starts with jaden bradley to be honest with you but also let's look ahead a little bit here i'm excited for a variety of reasons for the big 12 and a big reason why is you are going to be playing teams saw game in and game out and i think some of if you want to call it a flaw, whatever it is, some of these things I might think might be exposed a little bit early. And I think it's something that Tommy will be able to work around because he's going to have this battle in there that he didn't necessarily have in the Pac-12. Let's be honest. Yeah, no, it, the Pac-12 hasn't represented this this kind of um, top heavy elite play and then the middle not being far behind since maybe UCLA, Oregon and Arizona were all in the top 10. You know, in 2017, that was the last time that I can recall where the Pac-12 was like dominant. Like they had, yeah. they had some teams, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, so when you're going into the Big 12 with KU, uh, we we've gone through the list obviously multiple times, but KU, Houston, um, shit, even UCF is starting to get their stuff together. Um, you just Baylor, you you just have teams Iowa top State, to bottom. You yeah, just keep you, going. Kansas. You're not going to be able to just relax. Right. You're going to have to play every single night because you don't have a Cal, you don't have a Stanford, you don't have anybody on that in, on that roster or on that uh, that schedule. Now, people might say, "Well, you lost to uh, Stanford this year, you know, do you really want to, you know, play with that fire?" Well, yeah, because when yes. you go into these games, you know you got to bring it. Yeah, like, you know it's what a, it is? It's different mentality. Growing up watching, growing up watching, uh, you, growing up watching Lute Olson, I always it's funny. The Pac-12 wasn't a joke in the early to mid '90s or even in the late '90s because you always had you always had Jim Herrick with UCLA. That was the only time I ever felt that Arizona was almost kind of at a, maybe a slight talent uh, coaching disadvantage. But Arizona obviously took care care of its own. Then you always had Stanford in the top ten, and then you always had a couple peripheral teams. You always had a Cal under a Todd Bozeman. Granted, he was cheating. Don't care because he had Jason Kidd, Lamont Murray, Sharif Abdur Rahim. You had some Oregon teams in there as well. You always had a few little teams that. Uh, that's what it was good. That's what it was good. And I think you're going to see a lot of this. Also, I think you're going to learn to be able to play. And I think this is the biggest thing. You're going to be able to learn to play in environments that are against you. Because let's be honest, Arizona lost games on the road this year. And they lost games they probably shouldn't have lost to. But it's different when you're going into a place. Let's use Saul Bookman's uh, other alma mater, Kansas State. 
where you're going in there and let's just say, let's just say Kansas State's a fringe tournament team. Guess what? You're going into a hostile environment where you're going to be slapped in the face and you're not just it's not just going to be on you to be able to rectify the situation. You're going to have a fan base of screaming people. I think that stuff is perfect for you come March because you're dealing with an extra little bit of adversity of not just on the court, but off the court as well. Off the court, I guess is you know, technical. But yes, Saul Bookman, what say you? When you play in hostile environments, because it's so loud, because it's so intense, it forces you to have to think and and almost separate yourself from, from the atmosphere. You have to play in the moment. You have to concentrate at a high level. You have to know exactly what each other's doing. And your chemistry can't just be verbal. It has right. you have to be able to read each other in those moments. Yep. When you get to the tournament, I would I would argue that it's the same thing. Even though we had the home court advantage last night, right? Because we had a big crowd. That didn't mean shit because the other 75% of the crowd is rooting against you. Right. And and it started to get loud. People were hyping up Clemson. They're getting and it just felt like they could never get over that hump. And when you're playing in when you're playing in fog, when you're playing at the OOD, which is the octagon of doom, by the way, for you can like that the octagon of doom. Yeah, yeah, because it's shaped like an octagon. That's awesome. Um, and so uh, when you're playing at those, when you're playing in at, at Iowa State, Oklahoma State, whatever, those are hostile environments. You're not going to get, you know, 25 percent of a crowd show up to to for Washington State, Arizona. Like right. that's not going to happen anymore. Right. Every single Big 12 facility will be packed because right. Arizona's coming to town just like they pack it when KU's coming to town. No different. I'm excited for it, Mike. And I, I do have a question for you. Are we going to be playing on Monday nights? We are going to be playing on Monday nights. Are we we are going to be playing on Monday nights. And I can also guarantee you this. No, probably very few 930 tip-offs, 915 tip-offs. We're going to have games. Get a load of this. This is going to sound really odd to you, Saul Bookman. We are going to have games that might be tipping off at five. I am not kidding. Five in conference play. And guess what? It's also not going to be buried on a network that nobody has as well. So again, <laughs> there's a lot. Now, listen, let's say that you some of these games, you have to stay up really late and you're trying to get to sleep at the end and you're probably thinking, man, I need some OGs. You always need OGs, but these are the kind of times you need OGs. Saul, it is gummy season. Following uh, uh, Follow along as eight competing dispensaries put gummies, or wow, gummies versus gummies against each other in a bracket to determine a champion. Listen to this. You've got in the East, the Mint, six doors. In the, the Zen Leaf, the Verano, six doors. Sticky Saguaro, one door. The West is loaded, though. This is a total loaded bracket, Saul Bookman. You've got the Jars, 14 doors. Ponderosa, four doors. Valley of the Sun, one door. The Giving Tree, one door. and AZ Organics. To learn more about OG's gummies and where you can find them, head on over to ogsbrands.com. Must be 21 years up to enjoy responsibly. Saul Bookman, you have consumed OG's uh, recently. This is true. I love OG's. I love right. OG's. You know, I, I will say this. If you've never been to a dispensary, I, I encourage you to go for the first time because it's nothing like you would expect. I didn't know what to expect the first time I went, which is only like two years ago, maybe. Right. And I walked in and the people there are so friendly. They're so helpful. If you just have something that you're looking for, they're going to point you in the right direction or recommend something. Oh, and by the way, OGs is almost always sold out. So if you see it on the rack, grab some. My favorite's always the Indica uh, blends. So, uh, you know, that's, that's the way I like to go with the berries. It's nice and chill or the orange creamsicle, Mike. All right. I got to say something. I got to say something here because I've seen this comment here a bunch of times. First of all, I appreciate all of your guys' passion in the comments, but I need to tell you guys this. Listen, the ASU guys troll Arizona. I totally get it. <laughs> That's what they do. It's a rivalry. These dudes are the these dudes are really, really good people, though, and they work hard at their craft. So again, if you want to make fun of ASU, go for it. Shane Diefenbach, one of my favorite people in the company. I miss Shane Diefenbach for the six months. Totri is a good dude. Give you an idea. Totri called me yesterday and Saul wishing us luck because it was good for the company. Again, if you want to make fun of ASU all wish you want, us luck, not the us, team. Yes, yes, yes. That's true. That's true. Wishing us luck. But again, on a serious note. 
These guys are, these are good dudes. They work hard at their craft. You want to make fun of ASU all you want, go at it. But again, you take a shot at them. You're kind of taking a shot at me personally as well. So again, let's just keep it sports because again, these are great dudes and I appreciate their help to give you an idea. The show wouldn't be going on right now without Shane Diebenbach in the background. So again, Appreciate you guys, but let's just keep this on sports. Arizona ASU, make fun of ASU all you want, though. I do insist on that. Now, yeah, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not talking about ASU anymore. The, it, misery loves company. That's the reason why they were in a euphoric state last night, right? Mm -hmm. Because the thought of us getting to a Final Four is just sickening to them. Because then they have nothing else to really glob onto, right? And so. You know, Totri is always putting out these trolley tweets about, you know, come watch our show because we're going to bag on Arizona and blah, 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 blah. It is what it is. That's what he's trying to do. That's fine. And being his boss, it's kind of weird to say this, but it is, it's just, hey, that that's, that's their shtick and that's what they're trying to do. Shane did a pretty good job of defending us. I also did disagree with Shane today because he said that we were not an elite program. And I was just like, well, it depends on your elite program profile. If you're talking about national championships, then yeah, we're not we're not an elite program because we haven't been even been to the Final Four for the last two decades. But if Here's you're talking about conference championships, overall success, winning records, overall amongst the big dogs, then yeah, very successful. I have two program. big problems with Shane Diefenbach and Anthony Totry, and they're separate problems, though. Shane, De Shane Diefenbach, who knows his stuff, did not know who Tedaroa McMillan was before the season. That is Ooh. an unforgivable Ooh. sin. This is true, Shane Diefenbach. Ooh. I have a witness to this. Shane, that was a big error on your part. Totry's other one. Totry is the other one that I do not uh, I have one issue with. He said that he would take Jade and Rashada over Noah Fafita. That is being silly. That is being dumb. That is, uh, you're better than that on the ASU channel. But Shane, do you know who Ted Roa McMillan is now, though? That is my question. I think you probably do know who he is now. Saul, is that no G's that you're going to chomp it on? No, it was actually these uh, little uh, these little chocolate mint things from uh, Girl Scouts. Oh, nice. You deserve those. I All right, but he did say that Rashad over Fafita. Now, real quick, and we're going to get back to sports here. Desert Financial Credit Union, Saul Bookman, when you open a free checking account online, get $200 in bonuses. Let's get started by visiting desertfinancial.com slash 200 all right, here's all again. Here's where it's at. You can join a credit union that is committed to giving back to the community and sharing success with their members. Look at Desert Financial for checking and savings accounts, mortgages, loans, credits, investments, you name it. They got it. The Desert Financial Credit Union, all kinds of good stuff. Yes, that was one of the worst takes ever. The Rashada over Noah Fafita. I still mock and ridicule that one accordingly. Um, he doesn't believe that. If, if we were doing a draft today, you really think he would take Jaden Rashada over? Oh, I'm going to go with Nova it because he said it. There's no way. He's I was just saying it to get under believe. your skin. That's what I'm saying, folks. Like, don't fall for the bait, man. Just stop clicking on it. Stop replying to it. Just go somewhere else. Right. That's all he wants. All he right. Just well, wants your attention. There, there you He's go. He's a short you know, little guy. There you he, go. He hey. needs love. Hey, watch it. Be nice. Be nice, Saul Bookman. Be bad. nice, Saul Bookman. All right. Although I'm, I am much taller than Totri. All right. Now let's uh, Arizona and the Arizona in the Big Twelve. This is going to be fun, though, uh, for, a, for another reason as well. Because you look at it, what uh, what Houston's been able to do, and I thought Kelvin Sampson had a really, really good quote where he was asked about how has your program really been able to take off in these last couple, you know, these last three or four years. And he said, honestly, he said a big part of it was being able to recruit to this uh, conference. And he was asked, well, what do you mean by the conference? And he said, kids want to go play where they know that they're going to be in fun environments. They're going to be on ESPN. And again, the Big 12 kind of checks off all those boxes. I get a lot of people that are like, oh, you're not going to the Big 10 or the SEC. I don't care what anybody says. I would rather go to the Big 12. I cannot stand watching Big 10 basketball. I will not do it. And the SEC, I don't really care about that either. But again, I think it's going to be a good recruiting tool for uh, Tommy Lloyd, to be honest with you. Not that he really needs it. You got a top five class coming in. I am going more of the opinion that you need to have some more NBA players on the roster. I think that this only helps, especially when you can guarantee some home and homes with Fog Allen as opposed to Haas Pavilion, Saul Booker. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. You get to play on the road at some phenomenal environments. Some of the marquee places 
you could ever want to play in in college basketball. I, I'm excited for that. Like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think people realize how good Big Twelve basketball is. Also, I do want to say that you have to, you have to respect the other sports. I can't imagine Stanford and Cal having to go all the way across the country to for gymnastics or for water polo or whatever the case may be, right? That is a brutal travel schedule. Mike, you and I flew back from LA today. I hated every second of it because I hate flying on planes in, in the first place. But also, like, my legs are cramped. That's what they're doing. Not right. everybody gets to fly charter. The, the football team and the, and the men's and women's basketball team sometimes, yeah, they get to fly charter, but everybody else doesn't get to. So right. – that's that's a tough haul. I think the Big 12 is perfect geographic wise. Plus, we get to tap into that little that Texas connection. Right. Bring some dudes out from Texas. Let's go. All right, my guy Jake with a question. This is actually a good one. First of all, Kugel from Florida. I can tell you this with great authority. This is how cool Arizona is. Kids transferring from Florida, and he named Arizona as one one of his four finalists. I can tell you for a fact that Arizona has not contacted him, nor will they contact him. So you get kids from schools like Florida that want to be Arizona Wildcats. They're putting out tweets and are saying that, you know, Arizona is one of their four schools. Well, you know what? It takes two to tango, Saul Bookman. And if you know what, one school's got to be able to contact you. North Carolina was on my list of schools coming out of high school as well. But guess what? I was not on North Carolina's list, Saul Bookman. <laughs> No, I know I hard, find that hard to believe. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I was not. They did not want me to replace Ed Coda at North Carolina. They thought they had better options. I don't know if they did or not, but I guess they did. I'm pretty sure they did. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, I mean, did I ever tell you that Dean Smith came to my high school? was pretty good. Did I ever tell you that Dean Smith came to my high school practice? Really? Yep. So, uh, Dean or uh, Dick McConnell, the all-time winningest coach in uh, Arizona high school basketball history, he grew up four doors down in Kansas from uh, Dean Smith. They were high, They were uh, buddies growing up. Dean Smith came. Very, very interesting. Very wow. cool to see. He was a little guy, too. Made me feel like I had a real chance of being the head coach in North Carolina at some point. But, um, all right. Now, as far as this roster goes, Umar Ballo, I am going to keep pushing this because, again, and again, uh, Angel, we will not have that for about two months as far as the Big 12 release. I'm going to keep pushing this. I want Umar Ballo back. With, uh, I think on the wings, Arizona is more than okay. I, I think KJ Lewis, and this is with all due respect to Pella Larson, did some really good stuff here. I think KJ Lewis is ready to spread his wings. I think they've got some real talent in there. I'd like to see an infusion of new talent. Umar Ballo cannot shoot free throws. I get all of that. I want Umar Ballo back. I would love to see Umar Ballo back for another year, especially going into the Big 12. Yes, please sign me up for two leaders of men, Saul. What do you say? I want Umar back. Yes. really really bad really right. bad i think listen man i think he could fix the free throws i think it's in there i right. really do i last night was tough to watch. we talked about this at the airport i would get, i would get rid of the hitch hmm. get rid of the hitch i'd have him start uh in the pocket and and just get a nice little smooth release right. that's it that's all because he's he's thinking too much there's too much herky jerkiness to to get the shot up to the rim and last night because he wasn't getting a full extension. Basically, the way you got to think about it is, is you're in a telephone, one of those old school telephone booths on the side of the street. Remember those? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. And you're trying to get to the other side and grab a quarter, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody's like on the outside trying to give you a quarter. You got to reach over. Like that's how Balo should be finishing his shot. But instead, he was he was short arming it every single time. It was hitting the front of the rim. You got to give it a chance. And he wasn't doing that last night. So I think he could fix that. And I think he's got a lot of room to improve. He can get a little stronger. He can get a little uh, tighter with his body. And he has a good opportunity. Listen, he has a great opportunity if he really takes this offseason, like, seriously, like, really seriously. He could become an NBA draft pick. Right. Because he's got skills. You just got to put in the work. All right, now you might say, where could I have uh, put a, where could I have maybe uh, thought about uh, some areas to put my money to good use on Umar Ballo, leader of men, and his statistical performances? 
prize picks would have been your spot. You guys are all smart. You guys all know the prize picks is your spot. You would have done this. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up, whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, which the Suns will not have. There's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of the year. Get it on the excitement of prize picks. Uh, America's number one sports book fantasy app and uh, where you can turn all of your knowledge into money. And again, here's the deal. Go to prizepicks.com slash PHNX and use code PHNX for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash PHNX and use code PHNX. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Saul, do you play prize picks? I do. I do. Yeah. You know what? Everybody's it. Everybody is in on that. Uh, great question, Five of Kind Media. We are going to get into that in just a second. But, la uh, but first, though, still got to pay the bills. OGs, all kinds of good stuff. Again, with OGs, this is obviously flavoring Fridays. But uh, actually, I already read all this. I do apologize. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing. Sorry about that. All right. This was asked. Who's the starting five? Of the I'm just going. This is just a guess. Just a guess. Is it even... Uh, I am going to guess, you know, because it's fun. Um, so we got, J I'm going to go with Jane Bradley at the point. I think your wings are going to be KJ Lewis and Joson Sainon. You're also going to have, I am going to say it's going to be Umar Ballo. I think we are going to get him back. Power forward is going to be fascinating. I th they're going to definitely hit the transfer portal there. Probably Carter Bryant to start, but they're going to need some physicality as well. Either way, it's going to be a good team. It's going to be a good starting lineup. Either way, it's all, I have no doubt about that. Uh, you're going to have to get one or two guys from the portal. No doubt. You're going to have to because you need you need somebody to replace Pella, Caleb, and potentially Umar. Mm -hmm. Now, you have Krivas who can come in for Umar, uh, but you're going to need another backup big for him. Right. Um, I know you're I know you're big on the Dylan Anderson train, and uh, yeah. hopefully after two seasons um, going into his third, he's going to be able to give you the type of contributions that you hope uh, a kid like him can provide. Um, but – Time will tell on that. So you're going to need somebody in the transfer portal, uh, a guard. Multiple definitely players need in a the guard. transfer portal. Yeah, you definitely need a guard, and you definitely need a power forward at, at a minimum. I wouldn't mind. I also, again, like you said earlier, Mike, I think we should – I hope we can find, like, a dude, like a legit dude that you can go to when the times are tough and you know that they're going to most likely get you a bucket, right? We right. haven't had that for a while. Right. Yeah, we have not had that, but you know what? We are going, but also, Saul, we are also a football school here. I'm very, very excited because tomorrow we are going to be coming live to you from, well, not live to you from, but I will be recording Arizona football practices here. We're going to be talking Arizona football, some Arizona basketball. Here's the thing with Arizona sports. This is the life we chose, and we would not have any different part of it. This is very true. But Saul, what do you guys got going on? Any sun stuff, any events, any house cleaning items that Saul Bookman needs to get into? No, no. We have the Gila River event next week, which is going to be fun. Uh, we just sold out of our Cardinals draft party. 100 tickets gone within a matter of, I think, two weeks. And we're still a month out from the event. So, uh, yeah, we have sold out, I think, our last 10 events in a row. Mm. So, like, again, when these tickets come up, you got to grab them. And listen, folks. Next year, we did this a couple times already this year. We did a takeover um, for Sun Devil and U of A fans. And most of the U of A fans, credit to you and thank you guys for who came out, bought those tickets, and we all sat in a section to root on uh, the football team. And then we did the same thing for basketball. Um, I want to do some more, but we can only do more if we know that we have more diehards joining the family. So please go to gophnx.com. Click on the Die Hard link. Become a Die Hard. Join us in the chat. Join us for conversation in those chats. Uh, Mike is always dropping these little nuggets of things that he's hearing on the recruiting trail, which is fantastic. Uh, we got other people that are participating in there. KB Thiel is in there. So come come hang out with us. It's 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 a really good time, and we're trying to grow this community because the more we grow this community, the more events we get to do for Wildcat fans down the road. We request your company because you make us even better, just like we rely on all of you. And football talk, back the A-Ray, still the best Twitter handle out there, back the A-Ray. <laughs> so on that note, for the great Saul Bookman, the boss, I am merely Mike Luke, Shane Diefenbach behind the scenes making this all happen. And Shane, Tedaroa McMillan, he's good. He will be an All-American this year. You have been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. Oh, we will be back tomorrow with you at two o'clock you've been listening to the az wildcats podcast we all silly like the mayor 